morning to everyone. It's a privilege to be here to uh, contribute to this conversation. Um, it's important and a high stakes one for both business and and government. Um, I wanted to focus my remarks um, on the U.S. policy perspective on BEPS, um, <clears throat> both from a government and a business perspective, um, but also um, addressing uh, Pascal's reference to the fact that I was, uh, was there at the origin of the BEPS project at the OECD when I was the U.S. delegate um, to the OECD to uh, talk a little bit about context and I think some of the, the confusion about how it, uh, how it originated and, and the, the objectives of the project. So just beginning with the U.S. government um, policy perspective, um, I think concerns about base erosion and profit shifting are not new in the U.S. They haven't certainly gotten the media attention that it has gotten um, in Europe. But, but from a policy perspective and within the government, they have been um, top of mind for a long time. Um, so uh, in particular, the administration um, has, has been very focused on it, and the last six budgets presented by the Obama administration have included numerous provisions to address um, concerns about base erosion and profit shifting, um, particularly about aspects of the U.S. rules that may encourage um, or facilitate the shifting of profit in ways that were not intended. Um, in addition, both parties in Congress have been focused on the issue and have put forth tax reform proposals that have included um, aspects that have in, are intended to address base erosion and profit shifting. So I'd say that there is some broad consensus across policy lines that this is an issue that needs to be addressed and also a broad consensus around the need for pretty fundamental tax reform in the United States. Um, in that regard, with respect to uh, fundamental tax reform in the international tax context, there's a lot of common ground um, in, the, in the United States um, between parties. Um, in particular, there's agreement that the corporate income tax rate needs to be reduced, um, and so the base needs to be broadened, the rates need to come down. Um, there's broad agreement that the current system that we have, which is a worldwide tax system that taxes income upon repatriation, needs to be changed so that the tax on repatriation of income ought to be eliminated since it leads to um, undesirable uh, behaviors. And there's also broad agreement that active offshore earnings ought to be subject to a rate of tax that's lower than the, the um, earnings in the United States. Um, many countries achieve that, including Ireland through an exemption uh, system so that income earned offshore is not taxed. Um, the U.S. has not traditionally done that. We've used deferral as a way to reduce um, tax on offshore earnings, but I think in, in the context of reform, there'll be a move to either having a minimum rate of tax on offshore earnings or a complete exemption of those earnings in certain cases. <clears throat> That, <clears throat> that said, there's also agreement that there need to be tight anti-base erosion rules or tighter anti-base erosion rules, and they include um, improving our CFC rules, maybe tightening those CFC rules, again, imposing a min minimum tax on certain offshore earnings, de denying deductions in certain cases and limiting the deductibility of interest expense um, so that it is not um, easy to strip income out of the United States, and then addressing hybrid arrangement, hybrid mismatches consistent with the OECD. So <clears throat> overall, I think the U.S. political policy concerns about BAPS have, have been in line with the, the, the concerns that initiated or led to the initiation of the BEPS project. That said, I think U.S. policy officials also have a number of concerns about the, the, some of the flavor um, and direction that the, the BEPS project um, has taken in certain instances. Um, Deputy Assistant Secretary for International Tax Policy um, at Treasury, my successor at Treasury, Bob Stack, has, has indicated his, the U.S.'s support for the BEPS project, stating um, in testimony before Congress that the United States has a great deal at stake in the BEPS project and a strong interest in its success. Um, our active participation is crucial to protecting our own tax base from stripping by multinational companies, much of which occurs as a result of exploiting dif differences between national regimes. 
That said, he as well as congressional leaders have also expressed the concern that the BEPS project may be being used um, by some to, to specifically target U.S. multinationals um, in ways that are not consistent with a principled approach to addressing what is a very real policy concern. Um, and, you know, interestingly, in a joint statement last June, Senator Hatch and Camp stated that we quote, we are concerned that the BEPS project is being used as a way for other countries to simply increase taxes on American taxpayers. So Deputy Secretary um, uh, Stack has focused in his efforts at the OECD on making sure that any that the, the, the focus of the project is consistent with its origins. And, and, and Pascal, um, in his uh, remarks earlier today, referenced those origins. Um, <clears throat> the, 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 the purpose of the project was to evaluate um, and reconcile gaps <clears throat> between sovereign jurisdictions who are taxing. And I think it's important to, to, to emphasize that context. Um, international tax rules exist to allocate uh, profit between jurisdictions, um, and they they serve a very important role in that. Um, and it's important to understand that they they exist to allocate profit between sovereign jurisdictions. So sovereign countries are free to tax however they wish. Um, they choose to agree to international tax rules effectively um, to uh, agree to eliminate uh, double taxation and prevent um, uh, the, the, the differences between those sovereign taxing rights from, from um, inhibiting investment um, and cross-border activity. They also exist to help um, enforce domestic, uh, domestic rules through transparency and exchange of information. So the origins of the project really came about because there was a perception that those international agreements that have existed for many years um, in which countries have effectively agreed to give up taxing rights in certain cases on cross-border income um, in order to in encourage investment were resulting in circumstances where income was going untaxed. And the countries that had agreed to those international rules did not intend for the outcome to be that outcome. Um, it was not, unlike what the press um, it sometimes depicts it, it was not an exercise or an effort to address tax evasion um, or the, the breaking of rules or the hiding of income um, or the enforcement. It was very much focused about whether existing international tax policies and standards continue to make sense in the current environment. Um, so just turning very briefly to the business uh, perspective and the U.S. business perspective and concerns, I think the U.S. Uh, business concerns are, are echo some of the U.S. government policy concerns, which is the, um, the focus um, and in, in, in the public conversation about BEPS that has in, in, at times characterized it characterized it as, a, as an issue about the behavior of companies rather than focused on the policy conversation, which is very much the OECD's uh, focus. Um, and that has led to um, concerns about reputational risk because of, uh, of the uh, focus on certain companies. Um, and it ends up with being, there's be a disproportionate focus on companies that are particularly sensitive to uh, public and media attention and not necessarily addressing the policy, the overall policy concerns in ways that would address the issue more broadly. Um, it also creates risks of unilateral action um, by certain governments um, as in response to the political and, and public concerns, which again is not consistent with the hope here of having collaborative, a collaborative outcome. Again, international tax rules by definition exist about collaborating as to how to allocate rights between jurisdiction and if there isn't an agreement about how to go, go about doing that, you lose the purpose of having those rules in the first place. Um, and um, it can also lead, um, and the big concern is it's gonna lead to increased controversy, increased um, compliance costs in ways that, again, don't serve the interests of governments um, or, or business. So I think that is the focus. We'll leave it to some of the questions and answers to talk about specifically what the likely US actions might be.